Me and my girlfriend were in a city in Texas right off the highway, and we stopped at a tiny little gas station to get some beer and chips and such. For some reason, when we pulled in, I felt the need to say, I actually think I need to come in with you this time. Which was really weird because I usually always stay in the car whenever we go places, or if I do get out, I don't ever feel the need to announce it. When we walked in, everything felt normal. We were kind of just laughing and joking around about the half-naked Modelo girl cutout had a super pixelated face. We then started looking at all of the beer and I was being really indecisive, but could tell that we were both getting really sketched out, so I just grabbed two coconut margarita type drinks without even thinking about it and rushed to the counter, thinking that we needed to get out of there really quickly. There was this growing feeling of being watched. It was like pure malice that I haven't felt before. I can't really describe it. There was an old Hispanic man leaning on the ice cream cooler right by the counter and pretty much watching every customer. Everything just felt slow. It's hard to explain. When I put my things on the counter, the man started smiling at us really wide and then started talking in a very strange manner. It was like he was trying to be charming or personable but really just came off as really creepy. Outside the door, I could see a man in a red jacket also just staring through the doors, just watching and waiting. It was pretty obvious now. These men were waiting for us. It's really hard to explain the overwhelming feeling of dread that we had, and I didn't really talk about it until we were driving out of the parking lot. The man in the red jacket was still circling the building and watching us as the car drove off. The city we were in, it has a pretty bad reputation for having a lot of human trafficking victims coming in and out, and I honestly think that they were just waiting to find the perfect victim. I honestly think that if I hadn't gone in with my girlfriend when I did, she probably would have been taken, or maybe they would have taken me from the car. I've never had such an intense looming feeling of doom and paranoia in my life. It seems very mundane, but it was definitely a very close call. We kept discussing it the rest of the night. We're really lucky that we went in together and got out as quick as we could. I mean, who knows what could have happened. So this was about two years ago on Halloween. My best friend and I were leaving a club in Dallas and we stopped at a gas station to pick up some snacks and refreshments. The guy comes up to me and then tells me that I look pretty. At this point, I'm pretty drunk and I'm not really worried about a dang thing, so I just thank him, smile, and continue looking for munchies. He then starts to follow me through the gas station, but I kind of just shrug it off at the time. Me and my friend pay, and we're walking out when he comes up behind us and asks where we're going. At this point, I'm just thinking, screw off. We say that we're going home, and he seemed to take the hint and left us alone. My friend was planning on driving us home in my car since I was really unfit to drive. We're about three blocks from my car when we notice a car driving really slow right behind us. We glance back a few times and that's when we realize it's the guy from the gas station following us. We decide that it's not a good idea to lead him back to my car, so we decide to turn around and walk a different way back towards the street where the clubs are. He makes an illegal U-turn and follows us. He then rolls down his window and then shouts at us, asking if we need a ride. I then politely say, No thank you, we're good. I think we just made a wrong turn. Lo and behold, he continues to follow us. We speed our pace up a bit and he speeds up. He calls out to us again through the passenger window, asking again if we want a ride. I tell him to please stop following us or I'm going to have to call the police. He then proceeds to call me a really nasty name before taking off. Yeah, so to the weird guy from the gas station that decided to follow us. Hopefully we don't encounter you again. So one day about two years ago, I was at my house with my younger sister and our friend. We were about 20 to 21 years old at the time and all females. We were really hungry and decided to go out and get some sushi. On the way to the restaurant, I noticed that I was really low on gas, so I stopped to get some. I pulled up to the pump and parked the car. 
I went into the gas station to pay while my sister and our friend waited in the car. As I was walking across the parking lot into the store, I noticed a man that had started staring at me with a really creepy smirk on his face. We made eye contact and he yelled across the parking lot. Hey beautiful, why aren't you smiling? I didn't respond or even acknowledge him. However, a young woman happened to witness this and then said to him, Don't tell her to smile. Leave her alone. She doesn't have to do anything for you. To this day, I still sometimes think about that woman. I then thanked her and continued to walk into the store. As I then stood patiently in line, the same man walked inside. He came right over to me pretty much instantly while I was in line and started to touch me. He started to rub my arms and lower back and then I pulled away. I said loudly, Get away from me. I don't even know you. Do not touch me or I will defend myself. Some of the other customers and the cashier were watching us. I caused a scene. He whispered in my ear that I need to shut up so that people don't think he's a creep. Suddenly the man ran out of the store and right to my car where my sister and friend were still inside of it. I ran after him. He opened the car door and started to say something to them when I yanked him back so hard from his shirt collar and then punched him in the face. He then proceeded to call me just about every other vulgar name in the book, but he did leave us alone then got in his car and drove away. I'm really glad that's all that happened. I'm much more aware of my surroundings now. When I was around 17 to 18 years old, I was driving home from a friend's house after a movie marathon. It was around 1 a.m. when I left and a pretty decent drive. Not quite halfway, my gas light comes on. I had a few creepy cack haul experiences at gas stations and I was a little paranoid stopping that late in the middle of nowhere as a 110 pound female. In the end, I think if I wasn't so cautious, I probably would have been kidnapped or worse. The first gas station that I came across was pretty well lit and in a pretty open space. I drove up to the pump and looked around my car mirrors before getting out. As I was starting to pump the gas, this normal looking guy comes out of the gas station shop and then starts smoking a cigarette. The pump kept clicking off and not working, so I started messing with it trying to get it to pump. This guy then starts watching me and laughing. I assumed that he was just laughing to himself while watching a teenage girl trying to pump gas. After getting maybe about a fourth of a gallon, I decided to give up and move to a different pump. After this point, if I wouldn't have absolutely done everything that I did, I probably would have been screwed. When I got back into my car, I locked my doors just to drive to the other pump. I checked all of my mirrors before getting out and shutting off my car again. And that's when I saw the guy walking up to my car. He was smiling, and he was then walking up to the driver's side window. Not wanting him next to me, I rolled down the passenger window. He kind of paused for a moment, then just smiled to himself and walked to the passenger window. He then stuck his head all the way inside my window to talk to me. The conversation went as followed. Hey, I know this seems really weird, but I promise I'm not a creep or anything. My car broke down and I really need a ride home. It's just a half a mile up the road. Uh, sorry, but I don't really know you like that. Oh no, I totally get it. I thought it was pretty weird as I was walking up here, but it's only a half mile up the road. I'm totally stranded. I really wish I could help you, but again, I really don't know you. Yeah, I got you. If you had a truck or something, I'd offer to ride in the back. Sorry, no. Not happening. All of a sudden, he looks really pissed off. He yanked at my door, but I had already had it locked from before. Then he decided to reach for my inside door handle right through the window. My car was still running, and I slammed it into first gear and then pulled out as he opened the door. The car taking off slammed it shut, and I sped off. I then called the police after I got away. They looked at the gas station's cameras, and right after I left, he got into his red SUV and drove off. If I hadn't locked my doors the second time, I would have been screwed. If I let him come to the driver's side window, he would have grabbed me. If I had shut my car off, I wouldn't have been able to drive off in time. 
and if I didn't double check my mirrors, I would have been outside my car when he came up to me. I'm really fortunate for being so cautious. It honestly probably saved my life that day. One day after work around 4 or 5 p.m., me and a girl I worked with decided to go and see a movie. It was a rough shift and her and I felt like a movie would be really nice. She asked if we could stop by her house so that she could change her clothes from our work uniform. I said that's fine since it was maybe about five minutes away tops. We stayed at her house a bit, then we ate a quick snack and got in my car. She asked if we could stop by the gas station by her house so that she could grab a Red Bull. Once again, I was fine with that because it was near her house. I drove to the gas station and the only parking was on the side of an abandoned car wash next to the gas station. To form a better image, the gas station and car wash were right next to each other, both entrances facing the same way. It was entirely dark outside. The gas station was a fairly run down one and didn't have any lights at the gas pumps like most do, so it was mostly pitch black except for the light that was coming from my car. There was a semi truck that was on the other side of the gas station. There were also some cones there that were indicating that the area would inhibit the driver to do what he needed. So I assumed the parking spots wouldn't be too close and I parked. My friend got out and went inside and I decided to stay in the car since she would only be a few minutes. I locked my doors after she got out as it was a forced habit to do so. I went on my phone a bit and after a couple of minutes I saw a light flash on the driver's side mirror of my car. I turned to look since it was pointed right in my direction. The truck driver had a flashlight pointed at my window and he kind of just held it there for a few seconds. I was kind of freaked out but assumed that he had a reason for doing so. He then began walking towards my window still with the flashlight on. I rolled down my window no more than an inch assuming that maybe he was just going to tell me to move my car. He then stopped when he got about two to three feet away from my window then just turned around. At this point I was pretty scared just because there was no reason for what he did so I just rolled my window back up and waited for my friend. I'm still watching the guy just in case, and I see him rummage around in the front part of the semi-truck for a little bit. Then he stopped and turned back to my car. There was something in his hand, but I'm not sure what, and I'm really glad I don't know. He then began walking towards my window, and he was saying something, and it was at a rather loud volume. He got to my door this time and tried to open it. He kept trying to pull the handle a couple of times, but he couldn't open it. Then he started to pull it a little more aggressively. My friend came out of the gas station and she was walking towards my car. She looked scared. I was also scared. The guy saw her come into my car and walked quickly back to his truck and I then drove away as quickly as possible. I'm not entirely sure what happened or what was going to happen or what he was trying to do. The only good theory that me and my friend had was that maybe he saw that I was a girl and that I was alone and assumed that I would be a good target to kidnap or something. That's just a theory though. I'm really glad that I won't ever have to find out what he was actually doing. So as some background, my family live about a state away from me and at the time that this happened I had just turned 18 years old and my mom would finally let me drive to go see them, which was about a five and a half hour drive. No biggie. I was like, bet, I can smoke and drive that easily. And I did just that. About halfway there, I needed to stop to get some gas and get snacks. As you can guess, I had the munchies. I wasn't really familiar with the drive or where the gas stations were on the way there, and they were kind of spread out. So as soon as I felt like it wasn't smart to wait until I found another gas station, I pulled off the highway. I've always been sort of suspicious of people in general because I have not had an easy childhood. I grew up learning just to kind of feel when things are not right. So I wasn't really worried about being by myself because I knew how to handle myself. So I pull up to this relatively empty gas station, maybe one or two other cars, but it was a larger one with one of the antique shops in it. I parked at a pump, locked my doors, and go inside. There was no one at the counter yet, and there was a sign on the counter saying that they would be right back. So I just go and pick out a snack and a drink. 
Well, when I previously walked in, I noticed a man late 20s kind of just wandering around in the store. I saw him glance over at me when I walked inside, but didn't really think about it. Not really paying him any kind of attention, I went and opened the door to the soda when he comes right up next to me and opens the one next to mine. This wasn't particularly weird to me, but the fact that he was literally all the way across the store when I came in, and then as soon as I go over there, he does too? I was like, okay, I'ma go look for a different drink. So I go to the tea section and stand there for a sec, and he follows me to the one right next to me yet again. Only this time he looks at me, smiles a really creepy closed lip smile, and then says, Hi there. I do also want to say that even though he could have easily just been trying to be nice or flirt or something, I had an instant creepy vibe from him when he first walked over and that intuition has never failed me before. At this point, I just look at him, nod my head, then grab something and go to the counter, thinking to myself that I can just grab a snack later. He comes right up behind me with just one of those jerky sticks. Literally didn't grab even anything from the refrigerators that he was looking in right next to mine and just stands super close to me. And I mean, he was literally right up behind me. I could feel his body heat and his breath on the back of my neck. I'm literally just waiting for this freaking cashier to hurry up and come in here so I can get the heck away from him. So I decide to start calling for someone. No one answers or comes out. The dude behind me is texting on his phone and he's just looking around and at the door like he's waiting for someone. Finally, I'm just like, screw it, I'm out of here. I leave my drink on the counter and walk out. He follows me. At this point, I literally run to my car and I remember feeling him grasp my jacket, but with the momentum of my arm swinging, he wasn't able to get a firm hold on me. I hop in and lock the doors, turning my car in record speed. We make eye contact and out of the corner of my eye, I can see two men run from around the corner of the gas station. All three of them run at my car, which is not very far from where the first guy is, and I just floor it out of there, almost nearly wrecking my car on the corner. I don't know what they were planning on doing, but I imagine I was about to get kidnapped. I called the police because I don't know where the cashier was, and I just had a really bad feeling that they did something to them. By the time the police got there, they were gone. I now always carry a knife on me whenever I go on that drive. So this happened last night. I'm a 21 year old female and I was at the office later than normal, but not excessively late. I left at about 6 and realized I needed gas, so I decided to stop at the gas station that was about 2 minutes away from my job. It was still pretty light out because of summer, which made the whole situation even weirder. I go to this gas station and nothing has ever happened before, so I was pretty relaxed and just tired in general from work. While I was pumping gas, there was a truck with two guys that pulled up in front of my car, but perpendicular. Weird, but I just kept filling my car so that I could head home. The two guys just looked like two normal guys from the country. They were a bit older, around 40s and 50s, but I still felt a little uncomfortable. The guy driving was talking softly, but I just kind of ignored him at first. I honestly didn't even realize he was even trying to talk to me. The guy then yelled at me, which really caught me off guard. I think I said something along the lines of, Um, can I help you? The driver was then motioning for me to come closer to talk, which I didn't because I just felt really off about the whole thing. The guy finally spoke at normal level and said that they were looking for the shortest covered bridge. Now, this wasn't too weird of a question because it's a little hard to find without a map. Briefly, I told the guy the directions from the gas station and was grabbing my receipt. This is when all of my red flags totally went off. The driver then asked if I would lead them there. It was out of my way, so I said no and started to get in my car. He then yelled at me, spoke really loudly, saying that I could leave my car and go in their truck to direct them there. Then I wouldn't have to waste my gas or something. Just the thought of that made me really scared. I got in my car and I didn't respond. The truck didn't move so I had to back out. I was pretty worried about them following me. They did follow my car out but I took a few random side streets rather than drive right to the highway. Oh and also, 
During the whole time of this, the passenger was just staring at me. Also really creepy. The whole thing was really weird, and them trying to get me in the car just really scared me. I ended up calling the non-emergency police line to give them a description of the truck and to let them know that they tried to get me in their vehicle. Either way, it's the creepiest thing I've ever experienced. This happened about two months ago and I still get chills whenever I think about it. So I work construction and whenever I get off work I always like to go to the gas station to get some snacks. On this particular day in question I had got off work around 7pm. I was heading to my local gas station to get some drinks and candy. When I walked inside of the gas station I saw that there was a guy that was heading out right as I was walking in. I picked my snacks, drink and then paid. While heading to my car, I had overheard someone calling someone, so I decided to turn around and the worker at the gas station was outside. He then said, Hey you, you didn't pay for those items. I was like, what are you talking about? I literally just paid for them. Get over here and pay or else I'm going to call the cops and get them to arrest you. I then replied back, No, I literally just paid for these like I just told you. I noticed that while he was saying all of this, he was pointing at my car and kind of hinting something. Then he started waving for me to come towards him. So I decided to walk up to him and he walked me inside. Once we got inside, he then told me something absolutely chilling. There's someone inside of your car. When you were paying, I noticed on the cameras that someone was walking into your car with a knife in their hand. I was absolutely shocked and totally confused about this. When I went to look at my car, my back door was wide open. I walked right up to it, but there was no one inside. I didn't bother to call 911 since I didn't really want to file a report and go through all of that. I don't know what happened to the guy that was going to get in my car or what he was planning to do, but to this day, I'm really grateful to that worker for possibly saving my life. And remember, always, always lock your doors. The story takes place a long time ago on a frigid December night in 2007. I had gone to a friend's Christmas party and I'm now heading back to my apartment. On the way back, there's some construction blocking the exit to the freeway that I needed to take home. This is before the days that GPS navigators and maps were pretty common on phones. I decide to stop at a nearby gas station and to ask the clerk for directions to the next exit so I can get onto the freeway. As I'm walking into the store, a young woman appears seemingly out of nowhere and starts walking towards me. Just the sight of her puts me on edge. She's wearing a really ripped up black hoodie right underneath a thick windbreaker and a set of baggy cargo pants. I turn away and start walking faster, hoping I can get into the store and just avoid her. She calls out, Hey, wait! I pretend that I can't hear her and just keep walking, but then she shouts out again this time quite loudly. Wait up! And she waves her arms around. At this point, I can't really ignore her now, so I apprehensively turn to face her. Now that she's closer, I can see her face a little more clearly. The massive amount of makeup she's wearing doesn't conceal her sunken red eyes. I'm not gonna lie, her face was quite attractive, but somehow, I don't know, that just made her all the more unsettling to me. Before she even starts talking to me, I just know this is going to be trouble. So what do you want? I say to her. Yeah, so I know I don't know you, but could you do me a huge favor? My car won't start, and I think the battery's dead. Can you jumpstart my car? It's right over there. The lady points to a vehicle parked on the other side of the lot. Um, no, sorry. I don't have any jumper cables in my car. I tell her. I think they sell those things here in the gas station. Why don't you buy some and then you can help me? She says with a smile. I can tell that she's trying to be flirty with me. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. I tell her this and start walking away, hoping she'll get the hint. Instead, she grabs my arm and pulls herself closer to me. Come on, a hot guy like you can't help me out? You seem really cool. 
What's your name? I'm Tiffany. She puts her arm around my waist and then tries to cuddle up to me. I can smell the cigarette stench mixed with the perfume coming off of her. Now, as a young single guy in his early 20s, normally I would welcome an attractive young woman coming on to me, and I'll admit I was pretty tempted by her, but there's something really shady about this. I push her arm off. Look, I can't help you. Ask someone else. I decide immediately that I really need to get away from this girl and start walking back to my car, figuring that I'll just drive somewhere else and ask for directions. Of course, she follows me. Hey, come on. Don't walk away. Where's your Christmas spirit? I really want to get to know you. Come back to my car. She says as she once again grabs my arm. I shake her off and just keep walking. I get to my car and open the driver's side door. She walks to the passenger side and literally tries to open it. Look, I told you I can't help you. I shout at her as I get into my car and close the door. I turn on the engine and she runs over to the driver's side and knocks on the glass. I want to drive away but she's positioned herself in such a way that I might risk hitting her if I pull out of the parking space. I slightly roll down my window and then I tell her, Look, for the last time, I'm not going to help you. Get the hell away from my car and take a hike. Her demeanor instantly changes from fun and flirty to angry and hostile. She then shouts back at me, You freaking loser, like I'd ever even let you touch me anyways. Screw you. She kicks my door and runs back to her car. I'm really kind of shocked as to what she's done. I'm ready to get out of the car and call the police on her, but to my horror, when I look over, I then see her climb into the passenger seat of her car and watch as another man emerges from the shadows and then climbs into the driver's seat. He's carrying what looks like an ice scraper in his hand. My heart starts pounding as I then hear the other car's engine then fire up. She had been lying about her car being unable to start. I fearfully realize that there's no time to call the cops now. I have to get out of here right now. I pulled out of that gas station faster than I've ever pulled out of anywhere in my life and peeled out onto the road. I can see the other car then pull out and then start following me in my rearview mirror, thus beginning what would then become the most dangerous few minutes of driving in my life. I then start driving as fast as I can away from the other car. They stay in pursuit of me, honking their horn as they try to catch up to me. I take just about every turn that I can and weave around a few cars. I come up to a light that's just about to turn red and I see my opportunity now. I slow down a bit and the light turns red. I wait a couple of seconds and then I gun it right through the light, getting a few horns honked at me from the oncoming traffic but I don't care at this point. I look in my rearview mirror and I can see the other car slam its brakes at the red light. I then drive away as quickly as possible and pull into a nearby subdivision. I take a few turns and drive deep into the neighborhood, parking near a dark house. I turn off my lights and finally take a few minutes to breathe. My heart is pounding a mile a minute and I can hardly sit still. I wait a few minutes to try and calm my nerves and finally start driving back out the way I came. When I get into the road, there's no signs of the car. It looks like I've lost them. I eventually drive down to a different gas station and then ask for directions in there. I also tell the clerk that there's a crazy couple on the loose trying to lure people into a trap by claiming their battery is dead, but he doesn't seem all that interested. I can't really blame him though because I didn't really have a lot of info to give. I never got a good look at the car or its license plate. I safely make it back to my apartment. When I get out of my car and look at my driver's side door, thankfully the dent that girl made with her kick wasn't too bad or too much damage. Over a decade later, that story is still one of the scariest things that has ever happened to me. I'll never forget the look of pure malice that the girl gave me when she then shouted at me and kicked my door. My guess is that she was a junkie of some kind. I don't really know. I have no idea who that other guy was or what they intended on doing to me. I sometimes think to myself, what would have happened to me if I let her seduce me into that trap? That very thought chills me to this day. So to all you guys out there, 
Don't let the head between your legs do the thinking for the head between your shoulders. Especially if she's aggressively coming on to you for no good reason. Also to Tiffany, and I really doubt that's your real name. You can rot in hell. You and that scumbag guy you were with. It's been nearly 13 years, but I still really hope to never see either of you ever again. A young white man who looked to be about 25 years old came into my window at the gas station I work at. He was dressed very well in a new red Nike sweater, new Nike shoes, and a new baseball cap, and was also freshly shaven. I approached the window, and he asked me about a particular energy drink that we don't really carry, so nothing too weird quite yet. When I tell him we don't have it, he looks super dejected, and he kind of just stands there for about two minutes without saying anything. I'm a pretty patient person and I deal with a lot of weird people pretty often, so I just silently wait. The young guy then asked me, What should I do? And I reply, Um, about what? He then starts to tell me about how he hasn't eaten in like two days and asks what he should do. This is typically a ploy for free stuff. I said, Well, you could buy some food. Do you have any money? He says, um, I have two dollars, but I really want an energy drink. We kind of go back and forth for about a minute until I tell him he should probably go to the local shelter as they'll give him some free food. This is obviously not what he wanted, and without another word, he runs off. I think, man, that's super weird, and then go back to cleaning the store. About an hour later, the guy returns. When he comes back, it seems that whatever he took had hit him pretty hard. A car had followed him and a lady speaking very loudly to him, though I can't really understand what she's saying. He's smiling and nodding at her, then turns as she drives off. He then yet again approaches the window with a really huge smile on his face. I ask him what I can get him. He replies, Your eyes. They're green. Did you know that's a very rare gene to have? I kind of just nod and smile as my eye color seems to attract a lot of comments anyway, and I know better than to press weird conversations at 3am. He continues, It means you have light in your soul, rainbow light inside of you. Your name contains the name of Ra from the sun god in Egyptian culture. You're a part of creation in the universe. I frown and don't say anything back to him as wearing a name tag seems to always elicit weird comments as well. He continues, I have a very special two dollar bill and three quarters that if invested correctly will be worth a lot of money. I'll pay with these. You need to keep them and then use them to make money. He then proceeds to put three quarters, a two dollar bill, and a pine cone in my box. I kind of think to myself how strange it is that he assumes I would be able to do anything with the money when it's the gas station's money, not mine. Also that he put a freaking pine cone in the box. I ask him, what do you want to buy? And I explain that he can buy a water or some chocolate and a tea with the amount he's given me, which also fixes his issue of wanting to eat, get caffeine, and stay hydrated. He then agrees with my suggestions. He seems really grateful to me as I get his items, all the while smiling very brightly at me through the window. I'm thoroughly stressed out by the unwanted eye contact the entire time. While I'm cashing out the transactions, he runs to the gas pumps and starts staring at the ceiling of the pumps. This goes on for a good three minutes or so. He then turns around and comes back. I give him his items and change and, once again, he starts telling me about the love and light in the universe and then he asks me why I gave him the coins back. I also want to add it wasn't the same coins, I was literally just giving him his change back. I explained to him that I can't keep them as it's against the company policy to keep the customer's change. He then decides to bolt into the direction of the highway that's right in front of my work with his items and then disappears right into the darkness. Definitely one of the weirdest and creepy encounters I've had yet. So, this happened to me just last Christmas. Now, for Christmas, I had three different house parties to go to, so I decided to split my time so that I could see everyone. Because of this, I really wanted to get really dressed up and put my best makeup on. 
I guess you can say I'm fairly attractive, and I guess the makeup and pretty dress overdid it. I first spent the day with my family, then moved on to my best friend's house party. Her family is a lot like my family, and we had a really great time. I actually stayed there a lot longer than I should have, and I ended up leaving right as it was getting dark. Now I'm off to my boyfriend's family's party now. As I was driving there, I had noticed I needed gas. I was really trying to decide if I should get gas and be even later. I decided to get it then because I knew I'd be leaving his house pretty damn late and I didn't want to be getting gas by myself at midnight or something. I normally don't really like going to that gas station because I've been catcalled there plenty of times before. And what do you know? I pull into the end pump and first thing I hear right when I get out is, Hey sexy, you got a really nice body. Some guy is calling out to me from the window of his car. I kind of just do the half smile awkward thing. This was mere seconds after getting out of my car. I'm there standing at the pump and for whatever dang reason it's not working. It just keeps saying that it's not reading my card and that there's some kind of issue with it. But I just keep trying it because I just want to get the hell out of there. Because during this whole struggle I get catcalled two more times by guys hanging out of their windows. I was really starting to freak out at this point. Some junk car then pulls up at the pump next to me. And this is a serious, serious junk car. Like it didn't even have a whole door. It looked like it had some sort of bungee cord that was holding it together. I got a bad vibe and just decided to go inside and pay for my gas with the teller. The guy that was driving the junk car then gets out and he's going inside as well. But I feel like he's getting way too close to me. So once I get to the door, I open it and I let him go first. Like I was holding the door for him. I just didn't want him to be behind me. He starts saying how sweet I am, and it was just getting really creepy. He looked like he did really hard drugs, and just the way he was staring at me just really made my stomach turn. He looked like he was around my age too, which was 21 in case I didn't mention it. I was waiting in line and was getting lingering stares, but that didn't really bother me as much as the cat calls. So once I finally get to the cashier, he then says, Oh, I can't give you gas. I'm like, uh, why the hell not? And then he starts making some excuse on why he can't sell to Bronco fans. My purse is a Bronco's purse. I'm just like, dude, I'm trying to get the hell out of here. Hurry up. I gave him a dirty enough look for him to start ringing me up, but he then starts trying to talk to me about random crap. Stuff that I don't even care about enough to remember. As I'm walking to my car, I then get catcalled by what is now like the sixth guy to bother me. Now, here's where I get the most scared. The junkie car guy was right behind me walking out of the station. He walks up to his car and he's probably there for about a minute. I'm finally pumping gas now when I then hear the car to that door close. The junk car guy and a second guy then gets out with him. Now, the second guy looks so much more scary than him and he then just starts staring at me. He's being really creepy and looking me up and down. My heart is literally pounding right now just remembering this part. He starts walking up to me and he's rounding the pump when I then hear some guy behind me cat calling me from his van. Van guy is still saying some really perverted things to me as he rounds the corner then crashes right into a Mustang head on. Junk car guy number two literally jumps back at the noise. I take about a second to process what the hell just happened, then stop the gas and jump in my car as fast as possible, then reverse the hell out of there. The two really creepy junkie car guys are like screaming in laughter now, telling me to look at what I did. They're literally laughing like, <laughs> You just made him crash. Look what you did. I reverse the hell out of there like they do in the movies. I literally had to stop the gas at like $4 because I didn't want to stay there even for a second longer. I don't even know how to explain how I felt. It was like I was shaking and crying and also laughing at the same time. I actually had to scream in my car just to get rid of this feeling. The thing that shocked me the most is that the gas station was packed, but that they had no shame to cat call me like that. This area I was in doesn't even have a lot of crime. I really don't understand how this even happened in the first place. I called my dad right away and I couldn't even tell the story. I was just laughing like a maniac because it just felt so surreal. 
After that happened, my boyfriend always goes with me now to get the gas there. If he knows that I'm getting gas close to him, he'll always drive to the parking lot to make sure I'm okay. I've never gone back to that gas station again, nor have I worn that dress. At the time, I was 19 years old. My current age is 23. At the time, I worked at a dog facility, and Murphy's was the closest gas station. I was driving a really old truck at the time, so you can't entirely trust the gas gauge on them all too much. I put in my card and started pumping my fuel when this really tall man came around my truck and then started talking to me. Which is totally fine, but he just came out of nowhere. Well, he proceeded to take the nozzle right out of my hand and then started pumping my gas for me. Which, in my opinion, was kind of odd to me. He then went on to ask me what I was doing pumping my own gas. And I proceeded to tell him kindly that I was an adult and I don't really need anyone to do it for me. Well, then he asked if I had a boyfriend. I said that I do, which I was totally screaming in my head how bad that I wished he was there. He then looked around and then said, Well, where's he at? I don't see him here. At this point, I'm starting to mentally freak out. So I'm like, Sir, just because we're young, that doesn't mean we don't have to work every day just like you. My boyfriend can't be with me 24-7 because we're both really busy trying to afford a place to live. The man stopped pumping my gas at that point and then said, You're right. Well, have a good day. I really can't wait to bump into you again. I then finished pumping my gas and got the hell out of there. I always carry two knives on me at all times and I have a knife in my truck as well. I just want to add that I do understand being a gentleman and wanting to help someone out. But putting your hand on the nozzle of my pump while my hand was there? That is just not cool. Always ask first, and if they say it's okay, then fine. But don't just do it and then try and leave when they explain why their boyfriend isn't around all the time. So yeah, that was a little creepy for me. I haven't seen him since, but I also don't drive that same truck anymore. But I always have someone with me whenever I go to that gas station now. I'm a 40-year-old man. About two years ago or so, I had left my house to go pick up my wife from work. She had got off work at 11pm and I had headed out a little earlier so that I could stop at a Circle K and maybe grab a snack and drink. Right as I was walking out the door, I saw a car coming around the corner of the building and tried to fit in between the building and another car. It's kind of hard to explain the layout, but there was no way he was getting his car through that really tight space. Or so I thought. Right then, the guy floored it, going right in between the car and the building, scraping both at the same time. Putting a huge dent in the whole side of the car, the mirror flies off and the window broke on that side. The car then gets through and takes off. I wasn't really sure what to do, but right at that moment, the owner came out of the store and I had saw his car. I called out to him. Hey man, someone just drove in between your car and the building, and it looks like they really messed it up. The guy then starts to yell at me and asking if I got the license plate number. I didn't. I was just so awestruck that this was happening, and I didn't really think about it in the moment. He then starts telling me about how he's going to go after the car and then kill the person. Right at that point, he was really angry, and he was totally flipping out. After he said he was going to go kill them, he actually pulled out a gun. A small revolver. It looked like a 38 Special. I have some experience with guns, and I knew that that gun is one you don't want to get shot at with close range. My heart then sank right into my stomach. I thought to myself, is this guy going to shoot me? I mean, I was just the messenger, and I thought I was doing the right thing here. He then starts waving the gun around. I could tell that it was loaded. He then pointed it at me as he was waving it around, screaming that he doesn't take crap from anyone and how he'll kill anyone. I knew that I had to get out of there ASAP. My car was about 50 feet away. I told him that I was really sorry that this happened and what happened to his car, then turned away and started walking to mine. I was absolutely terrified the entire time, thinking he was going to shoot me in the back or something. 
Luckily, I was able to get into my car and call 911. They told me they had an officer right there, like literally less than a block away. The officer ended up showing up and drawing his weapon on the guy, and he got him to drop it and get on the ground. I was so relieved. I really thought that I was doing a good deed here, trying to help someone. I did see the model make and color of the car, just not the license plate, and that's what I was going to tell him. Well, I definitely learned a lesson that day. In any kind of situation like that, I'm just going to mind my own business. About a year ago, I was at this gas station with my mom and sister. We were going inside to get some treats and it was starting to get kind of late. It was roughly about 11 o'clock at night at this point. When we got to the gas station, my mom and sister went inside and I decided to stay in the car as I didn't really feel like going in at the time. It wasn't going to take them long anyways, so I thought listening to some music in the car alone would be pretty nice. A minute or two goes by and as I was checking my phone, a car pulls up right next to the one I'm in. Right off the bat, I suspected it was a little sketchy since the stereo was blasting like super loud. I looked out my window and I saw someone inside the car just sitting there. I just went back to looking at my phone since they weren't really doing anything. A few seconds later and the person gets out of their car. I look out my window again and I pretty much just watch as they circle around their vehicle. At this point, I was a little confused about what they were doing, but again, I decided to just mind my own business and look at my phone. Every few seconds that I would look out my window, I would see them sticking around. They weren't going inside the store and I was getting kind of nervous. Something about it kind of being late at night and having no one else around was really giving me a creepy vibe. Eventually, my mom and sister walked out of the store. I was getting ready to get out of the car quickly in case this guy decided to pull something on them. Luckily, my mom and sister made it back to the car and then handed me the treats they got. Once my mom started the car, though, the guy walked over to my sister's window and was trying to talk to us. My mom didn't roll down the window, though, because we could hear him pretty well from the outside. I don't really remember what he was saying, but he was starting to sound really angry right after my mom told him no about something. He then started banging on the window super hard and started yelling at us. At this point, I was pretty much just shouting at my mom just to drive out of there. She started to drive, but as we pulled out of the parking space, the guy got into his own car and then started it up. My mom had started driving super fast, but the guy seemed to be following us. As we drove into the main road, it then became apparent he actually was. We were all panicking at this point. My mom decided not to go to our house and just make a bunch of odd turns in order to lose him. In case things escalated, my sister had also dialed 911. After a few more random turns and driving around, we did end up losing the guy. This was easily one of the scariest moments in my whole life. If you're ever at a gas station really late at night, please be careful. So, the story happened to me about a month ago, but I still can't get over it. Not because I was a victim, but rather I was the one who witnessed the horrible event, and I still really blame myself that I couldn't do anything back then. And ever since that day, I always make sure to grab my phone and take it with me everywhere because you just really never know what might happen in the future, and you might be able to get evidence with a photo or video. Anyways, let's begin on the story. It was a summer evening, and as per usual, I was taking a walk with my small dog on the nearby parks and streets. At the time, all I had with me were keys, nothing else, so take note of that, because this will be relevant later. With that being said, though, I and my dog then went outside, but instead of taking our usual routes, I decided to take another one which led to a park-like area with two churches. There was also a gas station as well as a tramway just up ahead. Just when I was nearby a tramway, I then switched the route to the gas station in order to get to another small park that's actually located on the other side of the road. And that's when I then heard cries or screams of a young woman. I couldn't make out exactly what she was screaming 
but the only things I could make out were something along the lines of, that hurts so much, and something about a knife. Just when I was about four to five meters away from the car, which was in the parking lot right next to the gas station's territory, there was a young couple there, and that's where I heard the screams. The boyfriend of the girl, literally right before my eyes, threw her out of the car and then started to beat her with his fists and legs. And no, this wasn't just a mere slap. He was hitting and beating her with brute force. The guy even threw her against the side of the car like she was some kind of rag doll. I pretty much just froze in shock and fear for a brief moment, and the next thing I tried to do was just tell him to stop. But he just briefly looked at me and just kept hitting on the girl. Now, there were multiple reasons why I couldn't just run to him and try and stop him myself. One, I myself am a pretty physically weak girl. Plus, I also had a really small dog on a leash. Not to mention, I didn't have anything with me that I could defend myself with. Now, since the guy didn't pay much attention to me, I decided to grab my dog and run to a gas station to look for help. I ran to one of the employees that was checking out outside and then pleaded for help saying that the girl was being beaten and I even led him to the parking lot. The answers of that employee made my heart sink. He pretty much just shrugged it off and said something along the lines of, Well, they're probably a couple. It's their own business. Family business or not, that's not an excuse to beat the crap out of someone. What if she would have been killed? I've had my own experiences with family violence, and trust me, it's not a normal thing, and it shouldn't be ignored or treated like it's nothing serious. At the time when I was in shock after the response of the employee, the car then attempted to drive away. And just at that time, the front right door of the car then opened up. The girl was just sitting there. Even though the car was still on the move, it seemed like she was about to jump off. Once again, I tried to open the employee's eyes on what was happening. But once again, he just shrugged it off with the same excuse. The other customers of the gas station also didn't do a thing. Just asked what was wrong and just kept doing their own things. And just when I was about to memorize the car's plate number and try and make a call to the police from the station shop, the car was already long gone within the traffic of the street. And that's why I feel guilty. I keep blaming myself that I should have at least tried to pull the guy off the girl. Maybe I should have memorized the numbers of the plate and just went straight into the gas station shop in order to call the police. But instead, like the coward I was, I gave in to my hopes that I could ask the locals for help. After this situation, I'm even more disappointed in humanity than I already was. For now on, I will always take my phone with me, because if there's ever a next time, I'll make damn sure to get the evidence of it, and also call the cops before something terrible happens. When I was younger, every year for Christmas, I would always drive upstate to my aunt's house along a stretch of highway. I can't for the life of me though remember the name of this road. All I know is that it runs nearby Akron in New York at some point. However, most of the drive is through rural areas with little to no towns nearby. So it was the dead of night and my really groggy self had gotten off of a long shift. I had to drag my ass to my aunt's house since my extended family was expecting me the following morning. Near halfway through the drive, I realized I was really low on gas, which really irritated me. My brother had told me that he filled it up the day before, so he either forgot or he was straight up lying about it. I saw an archaic looking sign for a gas station off the next road. It wasn't an official road sign though. It was literally a pole with a slab of metal attached to it with gas off next exit or something along those lines painted on. I mean, that seemed a little sketchy, but people do the same thing with fruit stands on the highways. So whatever. I pulled off the next exit on some dilapidated country ass road through the dense woods. The whole thing was just really creepy and surreal. I kept expecting Leatherface to come out running out of the trees with a freaking chainsaw. Anyways, I eventually came to the gas station and I realized quickly that it hadn't been open for years. It was all rusted and the convenience store's roof was caving in. The gas pumps had all been taken out as well. I pulled over next to it and checked my gauge. 
I would probably only make it for another half mile before running out. So I called AAA and they said they'd send a truck over. Now I played the waiting game. I decided to leave my engine on because when the headlights were off, literally everything was pitch black. And my paranoid self definitely wasn't sitting next to an abandoned gas station in the middle of a forest in complete darkness. Hell no. So most of the wait actually went uneventful. That is, until I then sensed movement around the side of the old store, right where my lights are pointed at. I look up, but I didn't see anything more, so I just look back down at my phone. Then, over the sounds of the night, I then hear someone yell, Hey buddy, come over here, in a really demanding tone. I look up, and I kid you not, there's literally a dude standing by the old store looking towards me completely illuminated by my headlights. He looked like a run-of-the-mill homeless guy. I was honestly spooked and I figured he must have been squatting there or something. Still watching him, I rolled down my window and I then yelled something like, Yeah, what's up? All while still mentally crapping myself. I had my foot ready to ford out of there at the first sign of trouble. You got any change? Nah, man, I don't. Sorry, man. I look up at him. He has this kind of vacant expression, and he's standing stiff. Then I see more movement. There are heads, about 20 or so heads peeking around the trees beyond the man that I'm talking to. I can't see them clearly at all, but they're definitely people. Literally just heads staring in my direction from around the trees. I then see another guy beginning to walk from around the gas station, and then I turned around and sped off. I got as far away from that place as my tank could carry me, and I updated AAA on my location. The driver came back over and filled me up, and I didn't say anything. But after he left, I really wanted to call the cops, so I decided to call the nearest town sheriff department. They said they would send a trooper over, and I gave them the location. When I finally arrived at my aunt's house, they called me back and they said whoever was there was gone but that they could definitely tell that there was a large number of people that had been living there for a while. Blankets, canned food, the usual. This whole situation still really freaks me out, but frankly, I really consider myself lucky that I'll always have such a creepy story to tell people. I'm just really glad nothing bad happened. This happened to me a few years ago. I'm a mid-20s single female who lives in a rural small town. As a woman, we're taught many things growing up. Unfortunately, I'm not really the best at remembering or thinking things through. Because of this, the one rule I have always stuck with me is keeping a large intimidating dog with me at all times, which may have saved me from an abduction at the gas station. I'm a bit of a night owl. One night I was really on a roll. I finished cleaning my entire house, my homework, regular work, and I even got a workout in. During the next day, I was leaving town for a trip, so I was finishing up my night by packing up all my bags and preparing everything. As I finished loading up my car, I then realized that I forgot to fill up the tank. This was around 3.30am at this point. So without much thought for the time, I figured I'd hop over to the gas station that's a few blocks from the neighborhood and then fill up really quick. Then I could take a nap and then hit the road. Calling for my dog that's an American bully, we loaded all up and went to the gas station. I live in a more rural area so you don't really ever hear of anything bad or creepy here. So it honestly didn't even cross my mind to be cautious as I then pulled into the empty gas station. The place is located on the side of a highway with no buildings around it. And I kind of just figured since the place was so dead, it would be a quick stop. My routine is to always roll down my windows whenever I stop the car with my dog inside. As we have really hot summers where I live, and he's actually locked me out before. It's become so ingrained that even during the winter or with other people in the car, I always automatically roll the windows down. Just like any other stop. I start to pump my gas and then I turn to look in my car to keep an eye on my dog as he's staring out the windshield. At the click of the nozzle finishing, I then turned and found myself face to face with a tall thin man dressed in dark clothes. 
there was maybe about six inches between our faces. Pretty startled, I stumbled backwards and then gasped as he reached toward me without speaking. I don't know that I've ever felt so terrified. While it was already probably less than a second, my brain was already reeling with ways to escape from this man. Before I had any time to react further, my dog flew right out of my SUV window and landed on the concrete between me and the stranger. I'll tell you what, I have never once felt afraid of my dog, but seeing him in that moment, well, I found myself taking yet another shaky step backwards. He looked like a freaking porcupine. I'm not kidding, every single hair on his body stood straight up. I honestly couldn't take my eyes off my dog. As I then heard a low rumble come from him, his entire body looked to be vibrating. I could see the corners of his lips pulled into a snarl. His tail stood straight up into the air and it was like he was standing right on his tippy toes, leaning forward with his chest puffed out. His ears pushed forward, eyes locked on this man, and there was drool dripping from his mouth. It's like he was trying to make himself much more larger and more intimidating than he was. Maybe about two more seconds passed before the man turned to run, tripping over the gas line which caused it to spill, then scrambling back to his feet and totally disappearing into the dark. My dog didn't even move for a few more moments after that. We ran inside and called the police, but they didn't find the guy. I honestly don't know if his intentions were to hurt me or if he was just looking to ask for money, but it was easily one of the most terrifying moments of my life. I don't go to the gas station in the middle of the night alone anymore, and I honestly probably won't ever again. My mom used to work the night shift at a gas station in the early 90s. This is one of those mom and pop gas stations, so typically there was only about one person working the station at a time. During the night of the story, my mom's schedule had overlapped with one of her co-workers for two hours because there had apparently been an armed robbery in the same area the night before, so the owner was a bit concerned about being the next target of the robbers. After about two hours, my mom's co-worker leaves. About a half hour later, there was a goth girl that comes into the station and buys a pack of cigarettes. The girl is fidgety but polite. My mom tells the girl to have a good night, then begins to clean the hot dog case. As my mom starts cleaning, she notices that the girl doesn't leave the station. The girl then starts walking around for about five minutes, just looking at random items in the shelves. My mom finally stops what she is doing, and she then asks the girl if she needs anything. The girl goes up to the counter and tells my mom that her car ran out of gas just up the street, so she needs to get some gas. The girl doesn't have a gas can, so my mom grabs one of the gas cans from behind the counter and then tells the girl the price of the can. The girl then says that she doesn't have enough money for the can. Mind you, she literally just bought a pack of cigarettes. My mom kind of wears her heart on her sleeve more than she wants to sometimes, so she tells the girl that she'll buy the gas can for her. The girl then smiles and thanks my mom. My mom lets the girl know that she doesn't have enough money to buy gas for herself, let alone for somebody else. The girl seems to accept this and then thanks my mom profusely. Goth girl says she has someone she can call who will stop by the station and give her some gas money. My mom then asks if she has enough change for the payphone and the girl says yes. She thanked my mom yet again for the gas can, then leaves. My mom is really good at reading people, and while the goth girl seemed polite, there's something about the whole situation that was really giving my mom bad vibes. My mom looks at the surveillance footage that gives an outside view of the station. Instead of walking to the payphone, which is just left of the front door, the girl starts walking to a van that's parked really close to the station's exit. The girl then walks up to the passenger side of the van, and she starts talking to someone who's inside the van. She points a few times at the station while my mom is secretly praying she's not about to be robbed. The conversation between goth girl and whoever was in the van only lasts about a minute or two, and my mom just watches as the goth girl starts walking right back to the station. 
The goth girl comes back to the station and she tells my mom that she had got some gas money from her uncle, but that when she tried pumping gas, she had some trouble with the handle of the gas pump. Mind you, the gas pumps of the station are literally your basic no-thrills pumps. The girl then asks my mom if she could come outside and help her. My mom pretends to be calm, but she then starts to panic on the inside. She then tells the girl that she can't leave the station, so she asks the girl to try another pump. The girl says she tried them all, but she just can't figure out how they work. She asks again if my mom would come outside and just show her how one of the station's pumps work. My mom apologizes and she then explains that she's not able to leave the station unattended, or she'll be fired. She tells the girl that there's a gas station just a block up the street, and that they always have multiple employees on staff, so she should be able to get someone to help her over there. The girl starts to whine and she starts to let out this really eerie sort of snarl. She then gives the fakest big smile she can muster and tells my mom that she'll only be gone for a minute and that she really needs my mom's help. Now, when she said that she really needed her help, her teeth were clenched and she started stomping up and down like a pouting toddler. Goth girl then starts breathing excitedly like she's a rabid animal or something. At this point, my mom then drops all pretenses of being nice, gives the girl what she calls her cold bitch smile, and then says, So, by the way, I saw you talking with your friends outside, and I already called the cops and gave them your friend's license plate number. They should be here in just a minute. They're so fast in this town. My mom was of course bluffing, and luckily for her, the girl seems to believe her. Goth girl quickly leaves the store, gets inside the van, and right before she can fully shut the side door, the van is then peeling right out of the parking lot. My mom did wind up calling the police later on and then gave a general description of the van and girl. It didn't take too long for the police to find the van. It had apparently been abandoned on the side of the road near a wooded area. The girl and her friends had used hammers and box cutters to destroy the van's interior. The police didn't know what the girl and her friends had planned to do to my mom, but they said whatever it was, it probably wasn't even robbery. My mom wound up turning in her two-week notice shortly after this happened. My mom's advice to anyone listening to this story is to always, always trust your gut instincts. They just might save your life one day. I'm a 24 year old male and this happened to me a few years ago when I was around 21. I remember because it was shortly after my birthday in December. It was really cold outside and there was snow on the ground as we had just had a snowstorm pass through our area. I lived with my parents at the time and my mom is not really a fan of driving in the snow so she asked me if I could drive her to the gas station for her to pick up some cigarettes for her and my dad as well as a few other items they might have needed. I said sure, as I wasn't really doing anything at the time, and I grabbed my keys, then following her to the car. I remember the cold air hitting your face pretty hard that night, so it had to be at least around the teens, which made the snow and whatever else was on the roads really slippery. This is important to know for later on in the story. The nearest gas station was about 5 minutes away from us, but given the conditions of the roads, it took us about 10 to get there. Once I was able to park the car, my mom got out of the car, then made her way inside the store. From where I was parked, I could see her inside the store, standing in the line that was leading up to the register. I kept the car running as it was really cold and I just didn't want to be sitting in the car without any heat. I was browsing on my phone while waiting for my mom to get done, and right around that time I had seen her finally approach the register. There was a black truck that pulled up into the parking spot right next to my car. I found this a bit unusual given that the parking lot was empty, so I mean, there was really no reason for them to park right next to the spot where I was. But I kinda just chalked it up to them wanting to be as close to the entrance as they could given how cold it was that night. No one got out of the car at first, but I didn't even notice this until I looked up to see my mom walking out of the entrance back to the car. I glanced over to the truck's passenger side window, and I could just make out a figure sitting in the passenger seat and they were facing in my direction. My mom opened the door then got inside before then asking me what I was looking at. 
I told her about the truck pulling up well over a few minutes ago around the same time that she approached the register, but that nobody had gotten out. She first chalked it up to maybe they were just waiting for someone inside the store to come out. But when I mentioned seeing a figure in the passenger side of the car looking towards our direction, she then began to sense why I was so spooked out by it. She told me to just back out and get out of there and that we didn't need to worry about them once we drove off. As soon as I put the car into reverse and then began to back up, the passenger door swung open and hit the side of my car. A tall, very built man stepped out from the car as soon as the door made contact with my car. I hit the brakes as soon as I felt the contact and the man stood there before throwing his hands up at me and then staring in my direction. I didn't really know what to do as I'd never really been in any sort of accident before and my mom was sitting right there next to me and could see as well as I had that the door had not been opened until we had already started moving. The man slowly walked up to my window and just stood there. I cracked it very slowly and I told the man that I was sorry but that I didn't see the door open as I was backing out. For a brief moment, he didn't really say anything. That is, before he simply asked, Roll down your window a little bit more. I can barely hear you. I knew this couldn't be true as it was really quiet in that area, and I wasn't even speaking in a low tone. I told him that I'd prefer to keep it cracked as I really didn't want to let cold air get into the car. This really angered the man, and he immediately spoke in a more angered tone now. He was telling me to roll down my window yet again. I again told him no and this is when things then took a turn for the absolute worse. Without any warning whatsoever, the man smacked my window really hard with his hand. Startled, I immediately jumped back and rolled the window up. My mom was right beside me just absolutely yelling for me to just back out and leave, but I was really afraid of hitting the man in the process as he was still right next to my car. The man kept smacking my window really hard a few more times before he then tried punching it. It was right at this point where I realized that if I didn't get my mom and I out of there fast, this guy was definitely going to hurt us. I could see the cashier inside the gas station heard what was going on and he looked to be on the phone with what I could only assume was the police. But there was absolutely no way I could wait for them as the man was now both punching at my window and now kicking my door. It was like some switch had been flipped on in this man's head and he had just totally lost it. I told my mom to hold on as I put the car into reverse again and backed out of there as fast as I could, just barely missing the guy by a few inches. I pulled fully out of the parking spot before the man ran out in front of our car and slammed his hands right on the hood. I sat there frozen not knowing what to do as the man looked right back at me. I turned the car wheel then sped around him trying to avoid him the best that I could before booking it the hell out of there. After that, I honestly thought that was the end of it. But as we made our way down the road to a stoplight, I was able to see headlights that was fast approaching from behind our car. And once it was close enough behind us, I could then see that it was the same truck the man was in. There appeared to be two people inside of it. I assumed the man I encountered must have been the passenger, and I guess the driver was someone I hadn't noticed before. I told my mom that it was them behind us and she started to freak out and call my dad, then letting him know what was going on. We were still probably about 10 minutes away from our house given the road conditions, but I knew that there was no way that I could get us back to our house in that amount of time before these guys tried to ram us off the road or whatever else they had planned for us. My dad told my mom for us to attempt to head back towards our house and that he would try and meet us halfway in his truck. She told me this and I agreed that this had to be our best option given that I couldn't turn around and head back to the gas station still not knowing if the police had even been called or not. So once the light turned green, I punched on the gas and sped off. I'm going to be completely honest. I really wasn't being that cautious of the road at this point as there really weren't any other cars at this point of the night. There were a few times where the car slid from the ice on the road and I knew that it would only take one turn of the wheel to lose control, but I wasn't going to slow down and let these guys catch up to us. After about a few minutes of driving, we were able to see headlights right in front of us on the other side of the road. I was thinking that it had to be my father and as we got a little closer, we were able to make out his truck beyond the lights. Very surprisingly, the truck was still behind us still keeping pace with me given the road conditions. 
I could see my father cut across a midsection of the roads and then stop shortly off the side of the road. I started to slow down right as we approached and then pulled off to the side of the road, the truck still following me. As I came to a stop, the same man from before that was in the passenger seat hopped out of the car then started making his way to our car. The driver opened his door but before he could step out, both of the men stopped dead in their tracks at the sound of my father's voice. I suggest the both of you hop back in that car and drive right on out of here before I put a bullet in the both of you. I could see my dad walking out into the light, radiating from both his and my headlights. He had his 9mm pistol pulled and named right at the man's head as he stood right next to my car. I pretty much just watched as both of the men just stood there for a brief moment as my dad slowly inched his way towards them. The man then very slowly backed away towards his truck before then speaking to what I assumed was my father. You're really lucky you got here when you did. The man laughed and jumped back into his truck before it quickly backed out and drove off in the other direction. My dad walked to my window and he asked me and my mom if we were okay. I remember telling him that other than being scared shitless, I think we were fine. Shortly afterwards, my dad followed us back home just to make sure no one else followed us. I really have no idea what those men's intentions were or why the man acted the way he did. All I know is that if I hadn't reacted how I did to get my mom and I out of there, I just really hate to think what those men would have done to us. For some context, I'm a 22 year old female and at the time I was 18 years old. I had moved to the nearest city from my hometown about two hours away to go to community college. I was going to get a degree in fine arts. I lived in a relatively really big dorm with three other roommates who were also female. The dorms happened to be located in the back of the college near downtown, situated behind a steakhouse, nightclub, and a gas station. The area was sort of in a seedy part of the city, so I tended to be a little cautious whenever I went, especially at night. One of those nights I had been craving some junk foods and I wanted to grab some snacks to eat while I was watching a movie. So, I decided to head out to the nearby gas station. I grabbed my keys, my wallet, and then my phone, then told my roommates where I was going. I was really close by, so I was able to walk to it whenever I wanted to. Though, I would typically avoid it at night since it really sent off some really creepy vibes. When I finally arrived there, I opened the door, then went inside. It was pretty quiet, save for one guy who was hanging out near the liquor in the back. The girl at the counter seemed to be scrolling through her phone, seeing as she didn't really have much to do. So I went ahead and started looking at things I wanted to buy. Though, I gotta say, the closer I got to the back, the more that I could hear this sort of muttering. The guy who I had seen entering the store seemed to just be muttering absolute nonsense to himself. It wasn't that quiet, so I wasn't able to make out what he was saying. I didn't really think too much of it and I just went back to what I was doing. A few minutes had passed and as I was still shopping, the dude who I had seen in the back suddenly started yelling now. Just absolutely shouting random incomprehensible things. Every single second that went by, he seemed to get angrier. The man was pacing and he was waving his arms around. I was pretty much just standing there glued to the spot, absolutely terrified of this man. I didn't know what to do and I wasn't sure if this guy was drunk high or just crazy. The girl at the cash register seemed to have been alerted to his presence as well. We had made eye contact and she looked just as terrified as I did. We both just watched as this man then ranted, raved and began to pace around the store. I was unsure if I should call the police or not. I was trying to be quiet as to not alert him of my presence as I just really didn't know what he was capable of. Another few minutes went by and this guy then started yelling and screaming until he then walked up to the front, kicked over a few things, then left the store. I watched the guy then disappear right into the night, my heart now hammering in my chest. I had genuinely thought that I was going to get attacked by this crazy man. Thankfully he left though without causing too much damage. I walked up to the poor frightened cashier and paid for my stuff. I also ended up giving her some extra cash because I felt really bad, 
I mean, I know she wasn't getting paid enough to deal with people like that crazy ass man, so I just wanted to help her out. That's pretty much the end of my story though. I don't know what happened with the man and I don't know if he ever returned to the gas station, but I'm just really hoping that I don't encounter him again. I remember an incident that occurred to me when I was 18 years old. I'm 27 now. I was home alone and I decided I wanted a coffee from Quick Trip. It was really late at night at about 11pm. The Quick Trip I drove to was about a 7 minute drive from my house. This wasn't an out of ordinary thing that I did. I would pretty regularly go out late to buy whatever I was craving. So I get in my car and I drive over there. I go inside and I go to fill up a coffee cup. I walk up to the glass case where they have the bakery items. Right as I am browsing, an odd looking man then approaches me. The man was balding on the top of his head and he had this brown scraggly hair. He wasn't very tall, he looked about 5 foot 6 and he looked like he was in his late 40s to early 50s. He started up a conversation with me, and I wasn't really paying him any mind. That was until he then asked me if I had ever had little people soup. I told him no, and he then proceeded to tell me exactly what it was. The man then said, My mom used to make it all the time for me. You put carrots and potatoes in a stew, then you grab your little people, then clip their toenails and shave their heads and throw them into your soup. Now, I would have normally brushed something like this off, but for whatever reason, I felt my blood run cold and immense fear took over me. Fight or flight then kicked in and I just knew I had to leave. An employee walks by me and I let him know that I'm totally freaking out and he asked me why. I began to reiterate what the man had told me and he just gave me a really confused look. He must have seen the fear right in my face because he told me not to worry about paying and to just get home safely. Ever since that day, I have always feared that I'll run into that creepy old man yet again. But I just really hope that never happens. The story happened to me over 10 years ago when I was 17 and living in Las Vegas. It might not be that scary to most, but it was incredibly strange for me. I had pulled into a gas station that was near my home with one of my friends. It was a pretty well populated suburb, so it wasn't like we were alone or in any immediate danger or anything. As we were getting out, my friend Aaron spots another one of our friends then walking up. We're under the pumps and it was really well lit. As everyone is chatting, this obviously homeless man then walks up with a dolly with about 50 cases of eggs. Keep in mind, it's midsummer in Las Vegas, so it's like hot as balls outside. The homeless guy comes up and he starts asking us if we want to buy some eggs from him. Now, if this happened to me right now, I'd probably give the guy some money because obviously he's having a hard time. But I was really an asshole teenager back then. Plus, I also didn't have any cash on me, and I didn't think to get any cash back. Pretty much immediately, I'm telling him eggs are perishable and that I'm not really interested in buying some old hot eggs. Then we start questioning him. Where did you get all these eggs? Why do you have these? I'm asking more out of curiosity than anything. He just kind of sidesteps it and saying that he needs to buy his mom a prescription, and then once again asking if we want some eggs from him. My friend is now kind of laughing and generally just really confused and also still questioning him about why he thinks she's on the market for some eggs from a guy at a gas station. The man's getting a little frustrated now that no one wants to buy them and then starts to explain that he's just trying to buy his mom a birthday card. At this point, my friend who is 21 is then just standing there and asking him, Wait, I thought you were buying your mom a prescription. Which is it? Now, I'm still on the other side of the car, kind of just dumbfounded that she thought that any of the reasons this guy had for selling hot, old, obviously stolen eggs at a gas station were in any way not related to drugs. The guy's still standing there trying to explain to her some crap about it being his mom's birthday and that she's also sick. I finally cut him off and I politely tell him no thank you and that we're just really not interested in buying his eggs, then begin to walk away and go pay for gas. 
As this happens, she begins to talk to the other person that we knew who had walked up, and the guy with the eggs then begins to follow me towards the gas station. The guy starts telling me, You're really pretty. You have beautiful eyes. But I'm a little old for you though. And then begins telling me how he's in his 50s. I still wasn't even remotely uncomfortable or scared. I just kind of laughed it off like, Yeah, a little. I'm 17. I definitely didn't look it, but usually that puts weird dudes off a little. Even though in Nevada, you can have a relationship with someone over 16 no matter how old you are. The dude kind of laughs and he then says, I might be too old for you, but I'd give you a gumming like no man has ever before. This really took me aback. We were a considerable distance from my friends and not yet to the gas station. I kind of just stopped like, did anyone else just hear this? Then looking around for an escape from this conversation and just hoping my friends at least saw this happen. I've never before in my life heard some weird shit like this. I can't even remember how I got out of it and walked away, but at that moment I was really just stunned by the strangeness. I believe the whole conversation lasted a total of about 10 minutes. As I got back to my car, the man was gone. I just really couldn't begin to fathom how any of that was even real. I don't know, but it's definitely one of the creepiest experiences that I've ever had. Hopefully nothing like this happens again. Let me preface the story with a little background information. I'm a college student and I'm majoring in engineering. I'm currently away from school on a co-op rotation with a major company. My company is headquartered in a larger city and I'm working at a smaller site just north of HQ. I live in a small township in the suburbs, a gated apartment complex in a very nice area with very low crime rates. Now, I regularly go on jogs with my music on full blast and my dog right at my side. We walk around at night. It's by all accounts a very safe place to live, and I felt very safe here. That is, until today. I woke up and got ready for work like normal. When I got in my car, not only was it basically frozen over, but I noticed that I was low on gas. I decided not to risk it and fill up before work. Once my front and back windows defrosted just enough for me to see, I drove a block down the road to my usual fill-up spot. It has lots of pumps and it usually isn't even packed, and it's also super close to my apartment. They also have usually lower prices than any of the other gas stations in the area. I pull into the parking lot and there isn't another car anywhere, save for a semi-truck parked by the doors and all the employee cars around the side. All the pumps are open. I pull up to the farthest right pump and hop out of the car. As I'm swiping my card and doing all that fun stuff, another car then pulls up. I didn't get a real good look at it honestly, but it wasn't shiny or new. I barely paid any attention until the car stopped at the pump on the other side of my own. So you know how pumps are double sided? Of all the open pumps, the driver chose the one connected to the one that I was currently using. So, yeah, not exactly perfect pandemic manners. Still, I didn't really think too much of it, at least not initially. I could hear the other drivers swapping their card and entering their PIN number. I was freezing cold and just trying to hurry. I turned around and put the nozzle in the car and I just stood there for a minute. Very foolishly, I decided to keep my back turned. I didn't want to have any contact with that person so I just tried to pretend that nobody was there. Once I filled up, I removed the nozzle and then turned around, still keeping to myself and not even lifting my eyes. I finished the transaction and got my receipt. While it was printing, I looked up casually. I almost fell flat on the pavement when I saw a man peering around the corner of the pump just staring at me. You know how sometimes people describe creepy people as having an inhuman quality? Well, I never really understood that until today. The way this man looked at me sent a shiver down my spine. His eyes were just really cold and unyielding. He wasn't blinking or moving, but his gaze was growing even more intense. There was something animalistic in the way he stared at me. I felt like a deer being watched by a mountain lion. The hairs on the back of my neck stood. My instincts were screaming at me to run. 
This all took place in the span of just a couple seconds, but it felt like a lifetime. I very quickly opened my car door. When I did so, the man moved his head, tilting it to the side to peer into my car. I didn't really consider it at the time, but I think he might have been looking to see if I was alone. I intentionally blocked the view of the inside of my car with my body and then closed the door very quickly. I then locked it immediately. So, you know how earlier I mentioned that my car was nearly frozen over? Well, by now the front and back windows were entirely clear. The side windows, however, were almost still all icy. There was a single strip of clarity in the driver's side window. A result of me rolling the window down a few moments prior in an attempt to clear it off. As I hastily buckled my seatbelt, I ventured a glance to my left. The man was still there, still staring, but he had now inched closer. I could see more of his body now than before. He was tall with dark hair and a well-built frame. He was certainly much larger than me. He seemed a few years older than me. Had it not been for those eyes, I might have even said that he was attractive. But those eyes, they were just haunting. I decided to do the logical thing and get myself the hell out of there as fast as possible. I didn't want a chance of being able to follow me. Though my work has really great security, I didn't want him knowing where I worked. I don't really know if this man was just a creep or maybe something much darker, but I don't want to find out. Ever. I live in a small town where everyone knows everyone. Our town is normally pretty great. We throw community events, light up a town Christmas tree, and lots of other things. That being said, our town has a serious issue, and that's an old rundown building just outside of town that is absolutely crawling with tweakers, homeless drug addicts who constantly vandalize and steal from all of the hardworking locals. Right at around 11.30, I had pulled up to the only gas station in town that stays open late after a closing shift at work. I got out of my jeep and I started heading into the store to prepay. I noticed a rusty old BMX bike leaned up against the side of the building and I took a really deep breath, as that's usually the sign that someone sketchy was in there. I continued to walk in and I was pleasantly surprised to find an empty store besides myself and the cashier. I figured maybe whoever owned the bike was just in the washroom, and if I was fast enough, I could pay and be back in my Jeep before they even came out. I know it sounds like I'm judging people who don't drive or use bikes as a form of transportation, but after seeing so many CCTV pictures of sketchy tweakers riding bikes around and breaking into businesses on my town's community group page, you come to be a little more cautious when you see them. So anyway, I pay for my gas and I head out to my car. I didn't hear the bathroom door open, but I still found myself speed walking right to the pump so that I can just fill up and get the hell out of there. After all, it was late and dark, and I felt a heavy blanket of anxiety then cover me as I stood outside alone. I eventually got back to my car, and I start to unscrew my gas cap. I have one of those caps that completely screws off, and I usually just set it right on my back bumper. As I went to set it down, I had caught a glimpse of a man leaning against the gas pump directly across from me. I felt my stomach drop as he wasn't wearing one of the gas station uniforms and there was no other cars fueling up other than myself. I looked at him as I debated turning around to press the regular gas button. I didn't want to look away and give him the chance to approach me without being aware of it. I tried to put myself between the pump and my car, but the way I had parked made it kind of difficult to maneuver the nozzle the right way. My heart was beating and all I could think about was what he could want or what he was doing. After what felt like years of contemplation, I turned around and almost slammed the button and started to pump the gas. I kept my eyes low as I tried to watch his movements, but there weren't any. He just stood stiff, tall lanky with his eyes cemented to me five feet apart. I had paid to fill my tank as I was on E and the pumps are painfully slow so I decided to slide between the pump and my car and just wait in there. I tried to look back without being too obvious, but by the time that I had adjusted enough to clearly see where he was, he wasn't. I felt my heart then sink. He was gone. In those matter of seconds, he had seemingly vanished from his lurking point. Maybe he was just hiding behind the gas pump. Maybe he walked away into the surrounding darkness. I waited quietly, barely moving 
and so I then felt the click of the gas pump. I grabbed my cube pink Cabela's pocket knife and I did one last sweep to make sure I couldn't see him hiding somewhere. I got out and it was silent. I thought that he had lost interest, so I relaxed my shoulders, then putting my knife in my coat pocket. I grabbed the nozzle and I placed it back in the holster with my back to the pump where the guy had been. Struggling a bit to place it back in there properly, I finally turned around to grab my gas cap, screw it on, and dip the hell out of there. I spun around quickly, and there he was. Face to face with maybe five inches between us, stood the man who was leaning against the pump just five to ten minutes before. His face was sunken in, and he had dark purple backs under his bloodshot, wide open eyes. His cheekbones looked like they were threatening to rip through his skin. I didn't know what to do. I stood there for a couple of seconds, dizzy, ready to throw up, scream, or pass out. Whichever came first. I was terrified. I wanted to grab the pocket knife, but I couldn't make myself move. He stared at me before opening his mouth wide, like as wide as he could, and without hesitation or breaking eye contact, he just started laughing. Not a normal funny joke kind of laugh, but like a stereotypical evil murderer laugh. I thought I was going to die. I thought that he was going to pull a knife or a gun, hell, maybe even strangle me. But he simply just turned on his heels and walked away, still laughing. I watched him walk about 500 feet away before I convinced my body to grab my gas cap and get the hell back in my car. I don't know what that man wanted, what he was on, or what he planned on doing, or why he didn't do anything. I don't know if he owned the bike or someone else left it there. But what I do know is that it is absolutely vital to be constantly aware of your surroundings. I'm really lucky that I only got laughed at instead of God knows what else. By 13 years old, I had moved away a little farther, my hair was a little longer, and I was constantly getting mistaken and hit on by much older men who claimed that they thought I was at least 18. I had met my best friend that year, T, who lived in a mobile home park right across the street from our local grocery store, Surefine. We practically lived at each other's houses back then. We were inseparable. This one weekend in sixth grade was no different. Just for an idea, if your back is to the grocery store, there's a road directly in front of the parking lot to said grocery store, and directly in front and down the hill is the mobile home park, and just to the left of it, more up the hill towards the road, is a Sheets gas station. T and I had been goofing around, watching some really embarrassing movies at her trailer that I won't mention, when we decided we wanted to take a break and take a walk outside and grab some energy drinks to keep us up all night. T's mom was really wonderful and she completely trusted us. It was already dark out but Sheets was just up a hill. We didn't even have to cross a road to get there. BT's little sister who was around 10 at the time begged to come with us. So reluctantly, we agreed. We were being really loud and weird as we always were with each other, sharing one inside joke after another, much to B's annoyance. The people in the neighboring mobile homes had shot us disapproving looks or would jeer at us as we walked by. We were just getting into the light of the Sheets gas station when B became notably embarrassed by how we were acting. Now, I need you to understand how we were being. T was making really loud quotes from Spongebob as well as imitating their voices while I was circling B as I squatted into a crab walk and then snapped my hands like claws. Yeah, no regrets. Anyway, a couple of the people at the pumps had turned and looked at us weird, but T and I brought the weird out of each other, and we were laughing so hard it just really didn't matter. B rushed in and away from us while T and I calmed down a bit and we entered the gas station. We had took our time picking out snacks and drinks with the generous $20 T's mom had given us. There was a few other people in the gas station, but T and I hardly paid attention. We had already been in there close to 10 minutes when I realized that B wasn't near us. I told T this and she kind of just laughed and made some joke about some poor sucker kidnapping her. At this point in my life, I had had enough scary encounters that I was really paranoid. So I handed T all of my stuff and I told her I was going to peek out to make sure she was standing on the sidewalk. When I at first didn't see her, my heart skipped a beat, but then at the end of the walkway, almost shadowed, I saw B standing there with her head down. I call over to her and she slowly approaches, 
now complaining that we're the worst. I roll my eyes at her and I tell her if she stays outside she's not going to get any candy, to which she then sulkily walks back in. She just hands T all the candy she wants and then she tells us she's going outside to wait. So like the mother hen that I am, I tell her to stay by the door in the light. We're the third in line but even looking out the big glass door I don't see her again. T tells me not to worry about it and that her and B go up there all the time, but I'm still anxious. When I can finally put down our snacks and energy drinks right under the counter, I then tell T that I'm just going to peek out at B while she pays. Right as I open the door and the cold air hits me, I then see B standing only 10 feet away from the corner closer to the pumps than towards the mobile homes. She's now talking to someone in a lifted black truck with black tinted windows. I march right over and stand next to B, about to tell this black truck off, but when I appear, the window drops all the way down and I can see at least four grown men in the truck, all of them smiling very stupidly. I don't even say anything to them, I immediately look at B, grab her arm and tell her that we really need to leave. B pulls away from me and she then snaps that I'm not the boss of her, that they were just asking for directions. I hear a laugh from in the truck and then the driver says to me, Yeah baby, we just wanted directions. T then walks out and was about to start joking around again when she fully takes in the situation. Look man, we don't know where anything is. I reply, trying to get B to step away from the truck again. What do you guys want? Snaps T and the men just laugh again. Wow, so hostile. We just wanted directions to your bedrooms ladies. And with all that, the men then roar with laughter. T and I just roll our eyes. At this point, I'm not scared. I just figured it's some really bored losers. And T thinks the same. We're 13, you losers. Stop being chesters. In case you aren't familiar, that's the term we use for pedophiles. Chester Chester the child molester. No way. You beautiful ladies have to be older than that. Calls another, but we're starting to walk away now. The truck slowly rolls forward and one of the back doors to the truck then opens. A man unsteady on his feet and seemingly drunk staggers out. We freeze and watch for a moment, but luckily his is the only door that opens. Come on, we just want to have some fun. He then coos, motioning us towards him. You guys like having fun, don't you? You didn't shut up when you got here. You had the entire parking lot looking at you and now you don't want the attention? Nah, you're not shy. He takes another step forward. T looks at me, kinda makes a panic noise, then freaking grabs one of the energy drinks and chucks it at him. If the man hadn't been so intoxicated, he probably could have easily avoided it. But he was drunk, so it smacked him right in the chest. He made a wheezing noise as he fell to the ground, and before they could do anything else, we then tore off right towards the mobile homes, profanities being screamed at us. We were rushing down the hill but right to the right of us was the dirt trail that led to the mobile park from the gas station. We hadn't even made it halfway down when we then saw the truck rolling down the dirt path quickly, obviously trying to catch up and beat us to the bottom. B was already wheezing but I was counting on the fact that the dirt path didn't directly cut in front of us. Instead it went straight down the middle and it had side paths that led to each mobile home. But if they tried to drive through the grass yards right towards us, they were liable to hit whatever trash the neighbors had left in their yard. Luckily I was right though. They were still in eyesight but we were able to run all the way to the left, ducking behind the closest mobile home while they then decided if they were going to risk driving through the grass or follow us on foot. When we heard the car door slam again, we stopped ducking and we ran past the three outside trailers on the end of the rows and towards T's place. We rushed into our little screened in deck, caught our breath, listening for a moment. When we could still hear the shouting, we rushed into T's house and then locked the door. Luckily T's mom was in her room so she didn't see us stumbling in like panicked idiots. T immediately cornered B and she told her that if she opened her big mouth they'd have no more freedom and that she definitely wouldn't be allowed to go with us anymore. We went into the kitchen to open up our shaken energy drinks over the sinks as they exploded from how shaken up they were. We were able to hear yelling from outside, to which T's mom came out and asked what was going on. We must have looked really guilty, but we kinda just shrugged and said we had no idea. T 
Kay's mom rolled her eyes, turned on the porch light, then stepped outside. We immediately pressed our ears against the door and we could hear T's mom yelling at someone that it was really late and they needed to leave. That's when we heard the man swear and say that some girls had attacked his friend. T and I share panicked looks but her mom's having none of it. She tells him that if some girls really beat up his friend, he must be a really big pussy and tells the man to go to hell and shut up because her husband's trying to sleep. He swears a bit more but it sounds like he leaves. She looked at us suspiciously and pointed a finger at each of us as she then said, I don't know what you guys did and I don't want to know. Just be careful next time. And with that, she turns to enter her room, then pauses right before she enters and then says, Oh, and good job beating up a grown man. I'm proud of you guys. She then winks at us, then closes the door. So yeah, that's my scary gas station story.